thank you. Um, in this session, we're going to be talking about um, a critical element of educational technology. As you can see behind me, educational technology is a complex and layered topic. We've come to understand that it's far more than just computers and classrooms. At its foundational level, ed tech encompasses the technology infrastructure we need in our schools and in our countries to ensure fast, reliable access to information and content for learning. It covers the devices and connections we offer to students, parents, teachers, and administrators. And it includes the software, data, and resources that come with these devices in this infrastructure. But EdTech also includes the way we use technology for learning, be it an ICT as a standalone subject, e-learning platforms or other digital pedagogy, at times using technology to deepen, broaden, and interconnect academic subject areas, or perhaps the fundamental goal of using technology to expand the potentials of learning. Further, we have learned that education technology is at its peak about outcomes, student learning outcomes. We know that access to technology and learning and the usage of technology for learning has the potential for numerous student learning outcomes, from improved academic performance to vocational training, to building communication capacity, to the 21st century skills of collaboration and efficiency, to the ability to work, learn, and live in a variety of situations, all of which have lasting impact on students, their communities, and their countries. However, it's this point, the idea of identifying and articulating outcomes that eludes many of us in the field of educational technology. We talk a lot about purchasing equipment, building infrastructure, or supporting teachers, but rarely do we take the time to say what we hope to accomplish through these expenditures and this equipment. That is to say, why do we buy what we buy? We don't answer this question often because we believe there is some shared unspoken understanding of what students will get out of technology in schools but the shared understanding doesn't really exist. As such, I'd like to argue that the most important part of designing and evaluating your educational technology programs is this. You need to identify what you hope your students will learn through technology and education. And as you can see, I have listed several potential outcomes that I think many of you have either talked about in the past or heard discussed in countries around the world. Now the identification and articulation of your attended outcomes or if you like, the impacts you're hoping to, to have on your students is an arduous process and one we're not going to tackle in the next hour. However, I highly recommend that you engage in these discussions with an inst on an institutional or ministerial level. I would recommend you don't do this alone. Work with others in your region. Talk to other universities or ministries in other countries. Come to conferences like this one. Hire consultants. Talk to the vendors that you see around you here today about services, support, and help they can give you in long-term planning to achieve your goals. But most of all, talk to people like these up here. These are experts in the field and they are an excellent resource for you to use. This leads me to our discussion for today. Over the next hour, this panel will help shape the questions you need to ask when designing your educational technology initiatives. We'll do this by focusing on one element of the ed tech picture, devices, standards, and applications. And hopefully we'll provide you with a few answers and some expert advice that you can take along the way. If we come back to this and we look at the bottom layer of the educational technology pyramid, you'll see, tech, you'll see access to technology. This is the foundation for learning in all of ed tech. It's the tools, the devices, the connections, the software, the data and the network, everything down to the ones and zeros. And it is a foundation because as you can see, teaching and learning in ed tech is governed by the systems or the tools it's built upon. We can't teach students to research on the internet or develop digital literacy if they don't have access to a device or the internet. Further, the outcomes or the impact on students is built upon this technology usage, thereby culminating all of our efforts on the students themselves. Today we're going to talk about one element of the foundation level of access. So let's unpack that bottom layer here just for a minute. Technology tools in education can be broken down, simplistically mind you, into three categories. The first of which is infrastructure, which I will define as systems required to connect devices to content and data. This includes servers, broadband, wireless, other networking equipment or information systems, databases, and the like. These are the things that organizations invest in heavily, both in time and manpower. However, the users who rely on this infrastructure heavily rarely understand the interactions they're having with it. 
Second, we talk about devices, standards, and applications. These are the physical tools our students, our teachers, our education staff use to access our networks, to be productive, to consume information, to create content, and to communicate. It is their portal to everything else. As such, it's a critical element of your design strategy as it dictates the ways in which your users will interact with content, and that's the basis of our conversation for today. However, beyond the devices themselves, this category also includes the ways in which we use hardware and software and what rules govern that usage. Last, we talk about data, which is the information and content stored within our infrastructure and accessed by our devices. This could be educational content through e-learning platforms, the internet, student information systems, digital curriculum, student-created content, assessment tools, professional development, those sorts of things. Lucky f luckily for all of us, this conference has provided us an opportunity to explore each of these three areas. Yesterday we heard from a panel discussing the challenges of infrastructure development and another panel talking about teacher training and curriculum development that speak to the data section of our access to technology layer. This panel today is going to discuss the critical element that directly influences students' and teachers' usage of technology, the direct connection to the users to whom you are serving. We're going to talk about devices, standards, and applications. First, by standards and applications, I want to clarify just a bit. When I use those terms, I'm referring to the following. We're going to talk about ownership and the selection of devices, maintenance and care of those devices, product lifespans and replacement cycles, technology configurations and requirements, expected ways of using the technology and the rules and regulations for using that technology, and the support structures you need to ensure sustainability, efficiency, and productivity in terms of users and of the, the technology itself. And as you've undoubtedly experienced, there's a lot of complexity in dealing with these standards and applications, along with the complexities of selecting the device that your students will use that meets your requirements and your aspirations. So to focus our discussion a bit and to be a bit more contemporary, we're going to highlight a specific technology in our device discussion. You know, interestingly, if we were to hold this conversation 15 years ago, we would be talking about standards and applications for computer labs with desktop computers attached to a single location where students would be required to visit the computer as opposed to having it with them and only able to visit it when the computer is with them. That's, that's not really a model we're going to talk about now. If we had this conversation eight to 10 years ago, we'd be talking about laptops with students and teachers using a portable device for academic work at home and at school. They could store their data and access content from this one single machine, and the machine can move with them wherever they go, but perhaps not be a part of their everyday lives, and certainly not taking full advantage of the cloud. But today we're going to talk about tablets. So why are we having a discussion about tablets? Well, for one, they are a contemporary device. They are an evolutionary development that has amazing potential to infuse technology into our classrooms. Tablets are mobile, along the lines with our mobile phones, which means they can go anywhere with students, even places where a laptop cannot. They are a combination of mobile phone design and laptop productivity, enabling potential for consumption of information and the creation of knowledge, so both, both using and creating information. They are devices with 24-7 access to networking and the internet, providing ubiquitous access to tools, content, software applications, and personal data synchronized on the cloud, thereby providing always-on access to learning. However, I must remind you of one thing, that this is only the most recent technology that we are going to talk about. So this brings me back to my first point, and will kick us off for our presentation here. As you think about those big picture outcomes, going back to the pyramid I showed before, think about the decisions that we'll discuss here in this group, and how they can impact your potential in reaching those outcomes. Because I think you'll find that the questions that we talk about are foundational to planning a sustainable and impactful program that will be lasting for all of your students across all of your, your countries, your ministries, or your universities. Thank you.